A two op amp difference amplifier is shown here in which V out is a function of the difference or delta between the two input voltages. We want to find the gain. Assuming that the two op amps are properly biased, meaning that the positive supply and negative supply for op amp properly set in terms of values, knowing that and looking at this circuit, the two op amps are in negative feedback mode, and then assuming they are not saturated and they are ideal, then the virtual short between the two terminals is valid. We're going to utilize that, and then we're going to uh, utilize the superposition, meaning that we're going to compute the output as a function of V1 once, then we're going to compute the output as a function of V2, and then we're just uh, going to uh, add them together as a using the superposition. So if, uh, let's put it this way, if uh, V2 is zero, so we are shorting V2, basically it means if that is the case, we are making the assumption that in the circuit V2 is ground, zero, so then this terminal is zero. Therefore, as, as we discussed, virtual short between the two input terminal of ideal op amp is valid. So that also appears here, so it's going to be zero. Since the two side of this R2 resistor in that scenario is zero volt, there is no current flowing through it. Therefore, no current going this way. So there is the voltage zero between R3 and R1. Okay, so in that scenario, again, virtual short is valid. V1 appear at positive terminal. Therefore, V1 also appear at the negative terminal of this op amp. And uh, at this node, we have just V1. So now the circuit looks like this in this scenario. So it looks like we have R3 uh, going to the op amp. So going to the op amp. And then we have the zero volt here. So it's zero. And um, then we have R1. So you can imagine that uh, we have the uh, R1 here. And of course, uh, there is a single current that is flowing uh, through R3 and R1 because no current goes through R2. So that's one scenario. And the other scenario for current flowing is we have R3 and another current flowing this way. Let's name it I, uh, let's say just I2 and let's say I1. So these are the two current that we have. And of course, this two current in a KCL at this node that I'm highlighting should be equal to the current that goes through the final resistor, which is R2 here. And uh, uh, we have V1 at this node and then we have V out. So all I need to do to find what we have is uh, just deal with a simple KCL at this node, uh, at node that has a voltage V1, which uh, we can also refer to it as, let's say, node 1. So writing a KCL at this node, then we have um, I1 plus I2 should be equal to, let's say, I out. Okay, so the only thing I need to do is uh, to just substitute for these, uh, for these guys. Okay, so uh, it's going to be as simple as this. For I1, we have uh, 0 minus V1 divided by, so 0 minus V1 divided by R1. That's for I1. For I2, um, I don't know what the voltage here is, but what I know is this I1 is flowing through R3. Um, so if it flows through I3, then the voltage drop across R3 will be equal to R3 times I1, which I have the value of it. So therefore, I can say um, the voltage drop across R3 is negative, I, uh, negative uh, V1 over R1 which is the I1 times R3, that's the voltage drop across this resistor R3, and then I can add the, that voltage to um, additional voltage here that we have, which is uh, 0 minus y, uh, V1. So we have a negative V1 as well. And uh, in that case, what I have is um, 
that's the total voltage across R3. Then I have to divide it by R3 is equal to I out. I out is simply V1 minus V out divide by R2. Okay, so the nice thing about this equation is we can define V out as a function of V1. So V out as a function of V1 is simply um, 1 plus um, R2 times 1 over R1. I'm just reshuffling things around. And uh, what I see is um, when I sh shuffle things around here, I see R2 multiplying this one. So I get another uh, 1 over R1 from this guy. And then I get R2 over R3. And uh, that's it. So to clean up, V out is just simply V1 times 1 plus R2. And as you can see, if you just uh, compute a uh, reshuffle things around here, you would get to um, this outcome. Uh, sorry, this R2 is factored out already, so my bad. This should be, since we factor out the R2 and wrote it here, should not repeat it twice. My bad. So in that case, it would be just uh, 2R3 plus R1 divide by R1, R3. Okay, so what did I find is, okay, so the outcome is V out as a function of V1 is shown here. This is the first equation that I am looking for. Okay, so let's keep this as equation, um, let's say, A. And uh, for the second one, uh, let's assume that in this time V1 is uh, not here, so V1 is 0 and V2 is applied. So if, so this was the case of if V2 is 0. Now let's do the case of if V1 is 0. So if V1 is 0, then well, the circuit looks like something like this. So this time, circuit looks like, um, since V1 is 0, therefore at positive input terminal of lower op amp we have 0, at negative input terminal we have 0, so at uh, voltage across R2 will be 0 and V out. So let me put it this way. It would look like we have the upper op amp in place, intact. The voltage V2 goes in, of course, because the virtual short holds. So that voltage V2 should appear across uh, resistor R2. So the voltage V2 is also here. And then we have the connection to the output of this op amp, which has R3 still there. And then we have um, R1. But then R1 at this point has zero because V1 is zero. And then we have R2. Okay. And then here we have resistor R3. Okay. And finally we have V out. So here in the midpoint we have V2 and uh, Obviously, that's a rewrite because I just wrote it here. We have V2 uh, on this node. And then the current going through this is still your I1. The current going this way is still your I2. And this is the output current I. So the same KCL is applicable. So we're going to write KCL. And uh, KCL would indicate that I1 plus I2 is equal to I. And uh, we're going to substitute again as before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, OK, I1 is simply V2 minus 0 over R1. So V2 minus 0 over R1. And then uh, for R I2, the problem is I don't know what the voltage at the output of the top op amp would be, but um, I can 
um, say uh, this interesting observation that um, V2 is here and you have zero volt here so uh, the voltage you get here let's say V um, op amp so let's name it as Vx at this point at the output of the first op amp then Vx is simple uh, voltage division Vx versus V2 V2 versus Vx is simple voltage division between R3 and the R1 and R3 in parallel so what I can say is Vx is equal to um, just as simple as this uh, V2 divided by R1 uh, let's just do it in one step so it would be R3 plus R1 in parallel with R2 divided by R1 in parallel with R2 times V2 Vx is a larger voltage than V2 in terms of uh, V2 being the mid value between Vx and 0 and now going to Vx uh, we obviously would do this sort of a voltage division to go from V2 to larger voltage Vx now if you want to simplify this just so that we have easier time so I can say Vx before I write the rest of KCL and maybe um, maybe I shift the whole KCL one step down let's see so Vx is equal to R3 and then R1 parallel with R2 becomes um, let me put it this way so it becomes R3 it becomes R3 and then it becomes um, 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 and then we have plus 1 the whole thing times V2 the only thing I did is I just divided numerator by denominator that plus 1 appears because R1 in parallel R2 over R1 in parallel R2 becomes 1 and then R3 over R1 in parallel R2 just become obviously R3 times 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 so with that in mind uh, I2 is simply I2 written here is simply Vx minus 0 divided by R3 so Vx is here Vx divided by R3 resolve this R3 goes away and you get 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 times V2 so V2 um, okay so we're gonna get 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 times V2 is equal to I and I as you can see is 0 minus V out divided by R2 so it's gonna be so it's as simple as minus V out divided by R2 and just to make it a little bit cleaner I'm gonna shift this whole thing to maybe this side now we have enough spacing okay so what is the whole outcome here nice because in this equation we have only V out and V2 so I can just basically say therefore V out is equal to multiply there is a negative voltage be careful about that so multiply uh, both sides of this equation with R2 we end up with R2 over R2 result giving us a 1 so we get minus uh, V2 and then we get 1 plus 1 is coming is, is the result of R2 over R2 and then we have uh, 1 over R1 plus 1 over R1 so we get 2 over R1 and uh, let me put it this way don't forget the R2 and then we have 2 over R1 because 1 over R1 plus 1 over R1 and then we have 1 over R3 okay the final step is therefore V out is negative V2 times 1 plus uh, just reshuffling things here you will see we're gonna get R2 times same as what we saw before it's gonna be R1 plus 2 uh, R3 divided by R1 R3 
all right, I'm going to highlight this. So in this case, what I got, if V1, if V1 is set to zero, as if V1 is set to zero, as we did here, if V1 is set to zero, as we did here, then we get V out as a function of V2 is shown here. All right, now we can do superposition, meaning that we just need to add, this is, this is equation B, and uh, uh, so using superposition in linear circuits, we can add result of A and B together, and you can see we are lucky that relation, the gain from V1 to V out is absolute term is the same gain as V2 to V out. There is only a negative sign here. So when you add them together, what we get is V2. Uh, let me just make sure we have enough space. So when we do and we uh, simplify, we get V2. Um, we get V2 over or V out, sorry, we get V out over V, V1 minus V2 is equal to, um, I just added them together and factored out this absolute term gain, so it becomes V out equal to V1 minus V2, and then I move the V1 minus V2 into denominator, so we end up with the gain value, 1 plus R2 times R1 plus 2R3 divide by R1 times R3. So that is uh, the final gain that we were looking for, and I'm going to highlight it. Therefore, this is a version of a difference amplifier that computes the delta or difference between the two input voltages. And uh, by selecting the value of resistors, we can make the adjustment in terms of the value of the gain. I hope that this is helpful.